You're gonna be drinking some of Shuckle's toe juice. <laughs> Hello, my dear, dear friends. I am Brenda Dayton, your humble narrator. I apologize for the long absence of these top 10 lists, but I am going to try and get through all of these Pokemon generations, and then we can start working on top 10 lists that are a little bit different and stuff like that. So expect generation 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to appear shortly after this one. Uh, generation 2, it was really a great generation. They had a lot of awesome Pokemon coming out. It was also the generation where they introduced a bunch of baby Pokemon, which I don't know, that's sort of questionable to me. Um, I don't really give a shit about the baby Pokemon, it seems kind of pointless. But uh, if you count out the baby Pokemon, there were just a ton of great Pokemon in this generation. You got Gligar, Yanma, um, Politoed, Sudowoodo, Quagsire, uh, Espeon, and Umbreon, which are just some great evolutions. For my um, honorable mentions of this video, we've got Crobat, who is on my top 10 overall favorite Pokemon list, so technically he should be number one on this list, but um, yeah, I figured that would be cheating, kind of, so he's just going to be an honorable mention for this list. He's just fast, he's just uh, a beast, um, he can run just about any set, stall or stall breaker, so yeah, Crobat is the man. Then we've got Azumarill, um, Pika Blue was really a big thing, you know, nobody knew what Pika Blue was going to evolve into, and it evolved into Azumarill, which in Generation 2 wasn't that strong of a Pokemon, but he's definitely come into his own with huge power, he's now got a fairy typing, so um, I've I've been swung, I've been swayed just a little bit in towards Azumarill. Um, in addition to Azumarill, we got Slowking, yes, the... Slowbro was absolutely one of my favorite Pokemon. Awesome physically defensive Pokemon. Now we've got the specially defensive alternative variant, which is uh, really nice. Obviously a great sweeper just like Slowbro, and uh, that is why he's the Slow King. And we've also got Ursa Ring. Ursa Ring's just a badass overall. Just look at his face. Oh my god. Um, sword Stance, Guts Boost, uh, Quick Feet. He's got all kinds of great abilities, and um, yeah, once you get him status or anything like that, he, he only becomes more devastating, so Ursaring, definitely a good honorable mention. And finally, Murkrow. Um, Dark-type was inter introduced in Generation 2, which is... There's not a ton of Dark-type dark Pokémon on this list, but it was a really interesting typing for me. I remember being super intrigued by it in Generation 2. Murkrow was one of my favorite Pokemon, aside from the other one that's in this list, the other dark type that's in this list. Um, I'm sure you can guess who that would be. But yeah, I'm glad Murkrow got an evolution in Honchkrow, although it didn't happen until Generation 4, I believe. But yeah, still a really awesome poke and um, deserving of an honorable mention. Even today, he's he's pretty viable with Eviolite and stuff like that. He's got a pretty nice stall set with Toxic Roost Taunt, I believe. So yeah, Murkrow is uh, deserving of an honorable mention as well. We're not going to uh, stick around for too much longer. We'll jump right into the list without much further ado. Thank you for joining me, friends. The, here it is, the top 10 favorite Generation 2 Pokemon of the Dayton Dew. Number 10. Number 10, we've got Quillfish, the balloon Pokemon, which really he looks like an undersea mine. I don't think that uh, calling him a balloon Pokemon is really advisable. It is a water and poison type, and he's actually really, really fast with an 85 base speed, 95 base attack, so he makes a pretty decent sweeper, although not in the higher tiers. The set that I really like to run with him is um, one status move, either Thunder Wave or Toxic, and then you can get Destiny Bond, which is especially effective with uh, Thunder Wave. And maybe you set up some Hazard Spikes, Toxic Spikes, you can also stick Poison Jab or Waterfall, and Poison obviously becoming a really nice offensive type with the addition of Fairy Typing. So Quillfish is sort of starting to come into his own. I don't suggest buying one for your, your child's birthday and putting him on a string or anything like that because he's going to poke your kid's eyes out. And uh, also, he's got a little he's got a little butthole for his mouth, which I don't think is, is good for the children. Still one of my favorite Pokemon. He is amazing as far as uh, sweeping goes. People underestimate him quite a bit, which ends up working in my favor most of the time. 
Any team that I put him on generally seems to perform pretty well. It states in the Pokedex that Quillfish needs to inhale 2.6 gallons of water at once to fully inflate its body, which is a really, really specific number, and it's stated about five times in the Pokedex through all of the generations. So that is some nice consistency. 2.6 gallons. I don't know how they came up with that number, but it's uh, pretty hilarious that it's so specific. So definitely an awesome Pokemon. I'm glad to have him squeezed into the top 10 list. Let's head on. Number 9 Lantern is at the number 9 slot in this list, mostly because of its really interesting typing. It is a water and electric type, which you'd think would be completely uh, backwards in your mind. It would just uh, short itself out or zap itself and that would be the end of your lantern. But no! It has Volt Absorb, it has Water Absorb. It's a really, really awesome Pokemon that can fill a lot of different niches on your team. It's got um, interesting moves like Heal Bell and Volt Switch, which allow it to fill a couple of different roles. In addition to that, it's just freaking adorable. Look at the giant smile that it has on its face. There are some pictures of fan art that I found that are not so adorable, which probably um, relate more to the deep sea nature of the lantern, but... Even if it looked like that, I would still probably want one on my team. I'd probably want one on my team even more. <laughs> it is awesome. Lantern's Pokedex entry states that it blinds prey with an intense burst of light and then swallows the immobilized prey in a single gulp, which is kind of scary to me. It's got like a big happy smile, but it will definitely swallow you whole if it gets the chance. It's nicknamed the Deep Sea Star, but don't follow the star. It's not the North Star. It's going to lead you down into a watery grave, or hopefully your opponent into a watery grave. Lantern is definitely a good Pokemon. It's rising in ranks as far as usage goes, so I think people are finally coming to, to grips with how good this Pokemon actually is. Definitely one of my top 10 favorites, not necessarily for its battle prowess, but mostly because of how original its typing is and because it's freaking adorable. Number 8 Another adorable and tanky Pokemon that we have in the number 8 slot is Miltank. Yes, the female equivalent of Tauros. It is um, basically a, a force to be reckoned with. It's really, really amazing what this thing can do. It's got Heal Bell, Milk Drink, which allows it to get rid of status and heal itself up. I remember Mi Whitney's Miltank just slamming my little 10-year-old butt over and over more times than I care to recount. Miltank obviously produces Miltank Milk, which is a super, super healthy beverage. It is said that kids who drink Miltank's milk grow up to become hardy, healthy adults. That means they become hikers, probably, which are the hardiest and healthiest of adults as far as I can tell in the Pokemon universe. Hikers and sailors, mark my words. Um, Miltank has a really, really nice base speed of 100, which is surprising to me for as gigantic and round as it appears, but I guess it makes sense because Tauros has a, a pretty high base speed as well. Regardless, you can get rid of some of that speed stat in exchange for attack and defense with the use of Curse, which makes Miltank a really, really good setup sweeper. But even if you're just coming in there with body slams to spread around some paralysis, Miltank is a really, really nice option for your team. So, usually when I build mono mono normal type teams, which happens relatively often because it is one of my favorite normal type teams, I'll slap a Miltank in there and she serves just about every role. Cleric, Sweeper, Wall, whatever you want, she's right there for you. So, probably should be even a little higher in this list, but as it stands, all the other Pokemon pushed her out by just a little bit. So, let's see about those. Number 7 The number 7 slot goes to Houndoom. Oh yes, Dark and Fire Typing. Could you get more hellishly awesome? And uh, I mentioned Haunch. Haunchcrow was one of the dark types that interested me. Houndoom, or Houndour, I suppose, would be the other one. I found one near Saffron City, I believe it was, and I spent a very, very long time leveling it up to catch up with the rest of my team. I was not disappointed. It's got some really, really nice stats for sweeping. Fire and Dark are great, great typings as far as uh, offensive typings go. 
and yeah, in Generation 2, Houndoom was quite a bro of mine. If you are burned by the flames, Houndoom shoots from its mouth, the pain will never go away. <laughs> which is just amazing to me. It, it leaves its mark on your soul forever, which um, doesn't surprise me, you know? I can tell from some of the fan art that I was able to find that a lot of other people have a great, great passion for Houndoom. It was really hard to only pick a handful because there was a lot of good stuff out there. I can tell that people definitely have a passion for this Pokemon as much, if not more, than I do. And it's also demonstrated by the people at Game Freak since they gave him a Mega Evolution. So this thing is even faster, even more powerful than it was. and. It's, it's definitely something that, if you need a sweeper, you should stick on your team. I can't say enough good stuff about Houndoom. Generally, I don't like the, uh, the edgier Pokemon, you know. I, I'd rather pick something that's really beautiful than something that's outright badass, but Houndoom is both in its own way, you know what I mean? So, definitely an awesome Pokemon. Happy to have it on the number 7 slot in the list. A lot of people would probably put it at number 1, but, um... Yeah, all the other Pokemon, they, they earn their spot. Number six. Number six slot goes to Ampharos. So why would this Pokemon earn its slot over Houndoom? Well, it might be no mystery to you by now that I am quite a fan of the bulkier Pokemon. So, uh, as far as electric types go, Ampharos is one of the bulkiest that you will find. It also has a Mega Evolution, just like Houndoom, and uh, that Mega Evolution gives it a Dragon Typing, which doesn't really hurt, doesn't really help, it's kind of uh, right down the middle, but definitely what one of the things that brings Ampharos to the forefront for me is the fact that it has 115 base special attack paired with a 90 speed stat. It's got really, really low speed, but it can also learn agility, so you can patch up your speed stat in one turn and get to sweeping on the next turn. Ampharos is definitely an awesome Pokemon. It appeared quite a bit in the games and the anime um, as a major plot device in the Olivine Lighthouse. I remember healing up that Ampharos, swimming across the sea to do it, and you don't go through uh, pain and fight through all those tentacruels like that and not come out uh, enjoying, <laughs> enjoying the fruits of your labor, you know what I mean? So apparently, according to the Pokedex, Ampharos gives off so much light that it can be seen even from space, which is pretty pretty impressive to me. I guess that's why it makes a good a good lighthouse, but it is so much more than that. It can be uh, bulky, or it can be a sweeper. Again, it learns Heal Bell, so if you're looking for something to patch up status on your team, Ampharos is a great, great choice. And Electric Typing also it doesn't really have that many weaknesses, so it's a safe choice, it's a great choice. I would suggest putting one on your team just for that fact, and maybe even Mega Evolving it if you want to be super awesome and get the, uh, the Super Saiyan hair. <laughs> number five. Entering the number five slot, we have Shuckle. Oh my god, isn't it just adorable? It doesn't look like much, but let me tell you, 230 defense, 230 special defense, it might have low stats in every single other area, but those huge defenses are enough to put Shuckle on top most of the time, as long as it's not taking a super effective hit. It is tiny and adorable, it, it just looks like a, a little turtle, you know, a little wormy turtle. <laughs> it's also the only Pokemon that can make berry juice. So if you get an Oran Berry in the game, the Oran Berry only recovers 10 HP, but if you give it to a Shuckle for a couple of battles, he'll smash it up into a Berry Juice, which is apparently more easy for Pokemon to digest and absorb, and all of a sudden it recovers like 30 HP, which is pretty significant at the beginning of the game, if you were to ask me. You don't get one until Sea in Wood City, which, as previously mentioned, you gotta sail across the, the sea, Olivine Lighthouse will send you to Seanwood City, where you'll be able to find a trainer who will give you his Shuckle to keep it from being stolen by bullies. Well, Shuckle definitely was a surprise. At first, I didn't really get him, you know what I mean? But once I got into the competitive metagame, I realized how good a stall moveset can be. Shuckle rose to the top of my favorite Pokemon list. Give him Toxic, 
He's got Infestation now, which will hold your opponent in uh, while the toxic damage is ticking away. He's got Rest, he's got Stealth Rocks, he's got everything that he needs to be a great staller. Even Encore, you know, if you see your opponent trying to set up on your Shuckle, just Encore him into that move. And then uh, let the Toxic Infestation tick away. You can basically just sit there, do nothing, and that's probably the part I like most about him, is him loafing around while his opponent withers away to nothing. According to the Pokedex, the fluid secreted by its toes carves holes in rocks for nesting and can be mixed with berries to make a drink. So you're going to be drinking some of Shuckle's toe juice if you're drinking berry juice, but you know what? It's healthy. It's nutritious. I'm not going to judge how it came to be. I'm just going to feed it to my Pokemon and probably never taste it for myself. Regardless, Shuckle is an awesome Pokemon. Super happy to enter the top five slots with this little guy as the intro. I'm gonna try and stop with the uh, tanky Pokemon just a little bit now. We've had so many tanks on this list, so let's see what it do now with number four. Number four? So I promised number four would not be a tank, and it kind of isn't. Octillery is a Pokemon that has a very, very specific niche in being a Trick Room Sweeper with a really, really low base speed, decent defenses, but huge offensive power, and coverage moves out the yin-yang. Octillery is a super interesting Pokemon to stick on a Trick Room team. So generally, um, you'll want to give him Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Energy Ball. He's just got so much different stuff that he can run. You never know what an Octillery is going to do when you see it and that is probably the part that I like most about it. It learns Fire Blast, for God's sake. It's an octopus, a water Pokemon, that learns Fire Blast. It can blast its opponents with fire. That's just madness. <laughs> I don't even know how many different ways that I can say how crazy that is. So, definitely an amazing Pokemon as far as coverage goes. And then overall, I really just like cephalopods, you know? If uh, mammals and reptiles didn't take over the planets, cephalopods are next up, you know what I mean? Definitely amazing creatures. They can uh, imitate their opponents and stuff like that. Unfortunately, Octillery doesn't really do any of that, but he doesn't really need to. All he really needs to do is get in there and smash holes and stuff, which he does really, really well. According to its Pokedex entry, it traps enemies with its suction cup tentacles and then smashes them with its rock hard head, which it's got quite a gigantic head. Um, I don't know how much leverage or anything that you could get if you're wrapped around someone with your tentacles and then knocking them with your head, but I'm sure it's enough to make somebody faint, you know, if you hit them in the right spot. So, Octillery usually is found hiding in holes and stuff like that, but there's no reason for you to do that, little buddy. You need to come out, you need to show the world your greatness. It definitely is one of those Pokemon that almost ended up on my top 10 most forgettable Pokemon list, but it is definitely not a forgettable Pokemon for me because it it just has such a huge moveset and octopuses are uh, amazing, amazing creatures in real life. I was gonna say amazing Pokemon in real life, but they're not really Pokemon, are they? Are they? Maybe they are. Number three. We are entering the number three slot with a Pokemon that's quite the opposite of the walls that have infested the upper numbers of this list, and that is Jumpluff. Yes, uh, not much as far as defensive stats go, or offensive stats, or any stats really, except for that speed. Jumpluff's job is to get in there, cause some chaos with Encore, Leech Seed, uh, Sleep Powder, and just disrupt the enemy team, which I really like those types of prankster Pokemon, and Jump Jumpluff uh, embodies that exceedingly well. In these, in these current generations, Jumpluff can also learn Swords Dance and Acrobatics, which gives it a really nice sweeper set. Pair that with Bullet Seed. Granted, Rock Types, Steel Types will still give Jumpluff somewhat of a problem, but overall, beating the crap out of your opponent with a, a fluffy little piece of cotton is worth the risk to me. <laughs> it's an amazing Pokemon, and uh, it won't let you down if you're looking for something that will be faster than your opponent almost every single time, and will be able to put stuff to sleep 
or Encore or Leech Seed, whatever you need to do, and then, you know, maybe a coverage, coverage move in there because you don't want your little jump left to be taunt bait. Um, but yeah, usually it's even faster than some of the, the taunters uh, that are commonly used. So jump left, really, really nice. Um, and it's, it's chill as well, you know? It just floats around on the breeze. It's a little, a little cotton spore, basically, which I think is a really interesting idea for a Pokemon. A lot of people give flack to, you know, oh, ice cream cone Pokemon and trash bag Pokemon, but, uh, a cotton spore. You wouldn't think that it could, it could be extrapolated into a creature, you know, but somehow Game Freak managed to do it, and somehow it came out to be one of my top three Generation 2 Pokemon, so wonderful job, Jumpluff. I'm sure I'll be seeing you on a lot more of my uh, Mono Grass, Mono Flying teams, because it is just that good. If you haven't tried one, which I know a lot of people probably hasn't, because the usage for this thing is super, super low, I suggest that you do. Just give it a chance, you might be surprised. Number two? Number two probably comes as no surprise to a lot of people. This would be number one on a lot of people's list, I do suspect. It is Heracross. Yes, the fighting bug, the uh, the sparring partner of Pinsir, Scythe, Scythor, Buzzwole, whatever. All of these awesome bugs uh, are just coming out of the woodwork. But Heracross is chief among them. He's got his own mega evolution now, which gives him skill link which allows any multi-hit move to hit five times guaranteed, which is really nice because Heracross has access to moves such as Pin Missile, Rock Blast, um, there's probably some other ones in there. But yeah, get him up there with the Sword Stance, Close Combat, Mega Horn, oh my god. Heracross is just absolutely insane as far as uh, breaking down walls and such. His speed leaves a lot to be desired, but if he can get that attack in with 125 base special attack, he's hitting almost as hard as Machamp. Machamp has 130 uh, base attack, Heracross has uh, uh, 125, so really it's a bug that's almost as strong as like a four-armed Goro monster. <laughs> I remember trying to catch a Heracross for the longest time in Generation 2, smearing honey on trees, which uh, was a really... <laughs> really interesting way. I'm not gonna say stupid or dumb or whatever, but it was an interesting way to try and uh, get new Pokemon. And, oh, that reminds me, Ambipom. Ambipom should have been an honorable mention too. God damn, there's just so many good Pokemon. And Donphin, oh my god, there's just so many good Pokemon. Okay, anyways. With its Herculean powers, it can easily throw around an object that is 100 times its own weight, which is absolutely impressive to me, considering that it weighs 120 pounds. So it could throw around 1,200 pounds of weight, basically a small automobile, you know, <laughs> and just flip it around. This little 4 foot 11 bug, which 4 foot 11 bug is really a gigantic bug. <laughs> this thing would probably be so horrifying to see in real life. And you definitely wouldn't want to start a fight with it. Heracross definitely was a difficult one to get in Generation 2. Um, I didn't get one while I was playing through the game. It wasn't until much, much later that I got my lucky honey smeared tree to, to knock a, a Heracross out of it. But he was definitely worth it. And uh, definitely still seeing usage today, you know. He's still hanging up there in the higher tiers of the uh, Smogon metagame, especially with his Mega Evolution available. So who is the number one? Who beat out Heracross, which uh, probably Crobat or Heracross is number one on most people's Generation 2 lists. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there right now. But Dayton does like to be original, so let's see what original Pokemon was picked for number one right now. And number one, Zatu, yes. We've got the uh, Psychic and Flying type Zatu, which you wouldn't think he's much to just to look at his stats. You're like, oh, 65 base HP, 70 base defense, 70 base special defense, 
His speed and his special attack are kind of nice. What really makes this Pokemon is his ability, Magic Mirror, or Magic Bounce, yeah. So any status effect or anything like that that is thrown at Zatu will get bounced back into the Pokemon's face, other Pokemon's face, so they can Encore themselves, Toxic themselves, Thunder Wave themselves, uh, even set up Stealth Rocks on their side of the field, all just from Zatu being out on the field, which is really, really nice. In addition to that, he also sprung up just a ton of memes, <laughs> which I'm going to show you some of these videos now, and please don't be frightened. your brain not full of what the fuck after that <laughs> because Zatu's brain is all right so it's it's only fair Zatu apparently can see into the past and the future at the same time and it spends most of its time not moving because it's scared of what it sees in the future which kind of uh I think a lot of us can identify with you know it's one of those Pokemon that is a bit too real for its own good you know what I mean I think a lot of people identified with this Pokemon. It can't possibly just be the call. Um, I mean, he does have a pretty interesting call. The the remixes and YouTube videos that popped up were all called 2-2 remixes. If you want to look those up, there are just hundreds of Zatu, <laughs> Zatu based music videos. <laughs> and that's definitely one of the reasons that I had to put it in number one, because I remember watching these. Um, not as a child, not when this generation first came out, but when Heart Gold and Soul Silver came back around, I was definitely um, spending a lot of time watching 2 2 remixes. So, some of them still hold up to this day, some of them are just weird, and I go, why did I ever like this? But I guess that's a large part about being a teenager. However, Zatu will remain one of my favorite Pokemon for a very, very long time to come. And he can see the future, so he'll, he'll confirm that for me. Isn't that right, Zatu? <laughs> Anyways, friends, this has been my top 10 favorite Generation 2 Pokemon. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have any uh, honorable mentions or think I missed some Pokemon or misrepresented some Pokemon, feel free to toss that down in the comments. I would be glad to debate with you or discuss with you or whatever you want to do at length. So. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video, friends. I've also got links to Twitter, Patreon, Discord, all down in the description if you'd like to join me there, support me there. That would be massively appreciated. I hope that you'll join us for Generation 3. It will be coming quite soon. I am hugely looking forward to that one as well. I really, really like these early generations because that's when I was the youngest. That's when I was the most impressionable. That's when I have... Uh, the most memories and also the most the most time <laughs> the most time to play with uh, these Pokemon that um, I shouldn't have been playing you know but you stick your Game Boy in your desk and, and you're good to go <laughs> anyways I appreciate you so much for watching especially if you've watched this far friends once again I've been Brandon Dayton your humble narrator this has been my top 10 favorite generation 2 Pokemon I will see you in generation 3 quite soon and until the next time, friends, bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.